Welcome to the Love on the Go podcast, brought to you by Carolina's Matchmaker. I'm Lori Burzak, and for over 17 years, I've been helping singles find the relationship of their dreams all over the Carolinas. Along the journey, I've met so many amazing professionals and experts from various fields, and I'm excited to introduce them to you. What's my goal? I want to help you look at love and relationships in a new way and to grow in your understanding of how love works. Let's learn together how people have overcome personal obstacles and have found love, first and foremost, with themselves. The ultimate goal is realizing that you are worthy and deserving of love. Let's get started. Tony Smith is with us today. Hi, Tony. How's it going? (laughs) Yeah, so Tony is the owner and founder um, of Denver's Cupid, Colorado's Gay Matchmaker, Um, is his byline and he works only with LGBTQ matchmaking um, in Colorado and then he works nationally as well but that is his niche Um, and he has been doing this for eight how many how many years have you been doing this Tony you know when people ask me that question and thank you for asking yeah um, I have been matchmaking since I was a kid you know a lot of matchmakers will say that because Whatever you do as a kid, you kind of end up doing later in life. Yes. Uh, and I played both with my own GI Joes, which I'm giving my age away, the big ones, the tall ones. <laughs> they were as big as Barbies. But my GI <laughs> Joes would hang out at my my sister's Barbie penthouse. <laughs> and so I play, I always was bringing them together. My mom always threw Filipino disco parties, bringing everyone together. And I saw that power. And ever since then, in every job I've ever been in from high and in high school, post high school, college, uh, for 18 years at the Cherry Creek Arts Festival here in Denver, my job has always been to bring people together. So I always say forever, but I created Denver's Cupid during the pandemic. Okay, wow. All by the universe, uh, she said, you need to bring people together. And um, I ran for Denver City Council four years ago uh-huh. on the platform of connection mm-hmm. because Trump was elected. And I said, I got to do something. Mm. Um, the election didn't work out. But then the universe next said, after I didn't win an office, mm-hmm. she said, you're a matchmaker. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she said, you, you've been connecting people your whole life. And so I did some research and realized there were hardly any LGBTQ matchmakers. So I was like, all right, got to go. Totally. And, and Tony has been instrumental in helping me um, work in the LGBTQ community here in Charlotte and in the Carolinas. So thank you for all of your advice and everything. I, I love collaborating with you. (laughs) You're welcome. And let me know when I can come out to the South because, you know, I lived in Atlanta for 12 years and I lived in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I ran their events for a couple of years. So I know myself. Oh, good. Well, you're welcome. Anytime. Um, so Tony, how, how do you think gay matchmaking differs from heterosexual matchmaking or do you think they're similar or is it hard for you to say because you haven't done a ton of work in heterosexual Well, I would say, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are absolutely similar and there Mm -hmm. are absolutely things that are the opposite of each other. Um, number one, you know, what I love as matchmakers is we are people, we have Mm -hmm. human intuition that spans millennia yes and i love to say to people you know we all have that innate sense when you see two people together you're like oh yeah they totally belong together like j-lo should have stuck with ben affleck they look good together they were hot and then when she went out with mark anthony i'm like girl y'all don't look good together you know (laughs) Um, but anyways we have that intuition i think that's the most important thing that matchmakers bring to the equation is a honed sense of that intuition that has been in our Mm -hmm. society for years Mm -hmm. versus apps just being electronic. So -hmm. there's that, right? It's just like Mm -hmm. that innate sense, male, female, male, male, all the things, even families, you could say, oh yeah, they totally belong together. But then somewhere, excuse me, where they're different is, Mm -hmm. and this is my personal experience. So it's masculine, feminine energies. You know, I love that the LGBTQ icon is the rainbow and Mm. we represent a literally endless rainbow of masculine, feminine energies, every single one of us straight or gay. But in the gay community, um, like I, on that scale of one in a 10, 10 being uh, um, hyper-masculine, I consider myself a five or six. Like Mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can, I just have that 
span of like, yes, I can dress up in fabulous drag to mm-hmm. do uh, if I need to. I can, so that I'm girling up to be in drag or I'm manning up to do changing oil or something, which I don't do, but um, <laughs> that, that's my husband's job, but I'm attracted to people more masculine than me. Okay. And so on my matchmaking profiles, I have a masculine feminine scale. Okay. And that also applies to females. So um, two feminine women might like each other or feminine, more uh, uh, masculine facing, mm-hmm. you know, a perfect example of that is Ellen DeGeneres. So, mm-hmm. so she's not exactly masculine facing, but she's got a shorter haircut. She likes wearing sport coats, t-shirts, mm-hmm. which is actually my style. <laughs> okay. um, but then her wife is Portia de Rossi, this mm-hmm. stunning, very effeminate woman. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of those things that are a little bit perhaps different, but I can't say in the straight community that kind of can play out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like you might be the female that literally wears the pants in the family and you have a more feminine facing uh, husband, you mm-hmm. know? So I think that's one of the parts that's uh, different, but is the same in matchmaking is masculine feminine energies. So when you say feminine facing, what does that mean exactly? Um, what I would consider traditionally feminine, like Miss USA, Miss Universe. Yeah. In, like you long flowing, beautiful hair. Okay. Um, uh, versus more masculine facing where shorter haircuts, um, less, uh, less adornments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, uh, what I love is in that rainbow of, of sexuality, um, people are, you know, I love that guys, really masculine facing guys are wearing nail polish. I'm like, all right. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And then how is gaydar a thing? <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> can you explain I, that to our audience, please? Yes, gaydar is the innate sense of determining if someone is LGBTQ or not. So that's gaydar. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you can have really bad gaydar or really good gaydar. <laughs> okay. Um, and when it's kind of caught in the middle, that's where the term metrosexual came from. Oh, okay. It's like, oh, they're, and the other thing you might've heard in a movie, are they gay or just European? <laughs> <laughs> because they're, they're much more uh, fluid in expression. Mm. Uh, I found in my travels to Europe anyways. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it can be wrong as well, you know, but I like the perfect example of gaydar is how I met my husband. We're okay. at a, a volleyball, it's, it's a gay volleyball tournament. So most people there are gay anyway. So right. that kind of changes the dynamic of, of gaydar, right. but we're passing each other strong, hard glance. Okay. Instant attraction. And then, then I didn't see him again. Um, that was uh, April, 2002. And I saw him again, September, 2002. So yes, we are celebrating our 20th year together. Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. I was like five when we got together. No, just kidding. <laughs> I turned 55 this year. So I'm very proud of Me that. too. We're the same age. Class of 86. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. But anyway, so, um, but then, you know, you, you, one never knows, especially in more modern culture, right? Or modern mm. culture, I should say about uh, how masculine and feminine facing you are. Um, but I think, again, it's like that look in the eyes and then mannerisms. And I love it from that movie, uh, The Birdcage. In mm-hmm. my day, it's how you, you spread the butter on your bread, you know, or, <laughs> or something like that. Or even in the 90, 80s and 90s, it was like you would wear a, a, a an earring in one ear or the other. Um, and that's where Magic Earring Ken came into play. It was, I think I, I understand it was a gay designer that kind of like snuck it in. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Ken. Gay. So I can't wait for the Barbie movie, by the way. But oh, anyways, so I think I think it's a I definitely think gaydar is a real thing. Do you think that it's easier for men with gaydar than women? Uh, uh, women are I, I'm just gonna go on a limb and say 100 percent more empathetic than men. I think that's mm-hmm. also why most matchmakers are women, because they're more empathetic to emotion and feelings. They're more in touch with themselves. And I'm making general statements, I know. Um, but um, and men just need usually all the help in the world. And then that's why I found gay matchmaking to be a little different is the blends of masculine, feminine energies uh, and how to navigate that. But I think women are definitely better. And that's why you'll also see 
a lot more women with gay male friends than mm. men with gay male friends, mm -hmm. or even straight men with lesbian friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, but I also want to ask, do you think it's harder for women to be able to detect if another woman is gay or bisexual? Um, Cause how would they know? I think, well, again, it's, uh, it's how you react to each other, how you're communicating with each other. Is it more of a longing look? If, of course, if there's attraction. Um, and then just also it's being aware of what vernacular is being used, you know, um, you know, in the old days, in, instead of just coming out and saying, are they gay or not? It's like, are they family? You know, so, right. and it's just some key words, um, mm -hmm. but you know, that, is an, an interesting question. I've never been asked if women can tell lesbians faster than gay men can tell other gay men. Because I Any can't, I cannot tell. I mean, there's certain women, obviously, but for a lot of others, you really don't know. Yeah. Um, Walking down the street, you don't know if a feminine woman is, is gay or bisexual. How would you know, unless you did the longing look, but if you're just literally looking out, hard to tell. But I think it's also, um, mannerism slash body language, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a man, I, and I'll just exaggerate, you know, here, a man that saunters down the street is probably mm -hmm. gay. Sure. You know, or, or feminine, but, you know, can a female walk more masculine? That's a good question. Like, you know, yeah. is, you know what I mean? And also it's just watching the body language. All right. Well, um, you obviously know more about this than I do, but it's curious. And I think about it um, often because I, I regard myself as very intuitive, but, and I think that it also, um, you know, people say that everybody's sort of on a spectrum of, you know, would you, would you say that's true? In oh terms? yeah. I think yeah. Isn't that the Kinsey scale. Yeah. Was, so the that? being fluid sexually or just open sexually to being with a man or being with a woman. Oh yeah, there's, and then there's that spectrum as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sure we've all encountered the, the straight married couple that plays both mm -hmm. with another female or another male. Um, and that means one of them is gonna be uh, more on the bisexual spectrum mm -hmm. or, if it's like, okay, for example, a I'm thinking of a very particular couple in mind and I, names will not be said. Okay. Uh, male and female couple. Mm -hmm. um, I think the male is more bisexual. Um, and if a guy comes into that menage or thruple situation, mm -hmm. the guy is probably more likely to be bisexual and the female just gets to get extra candy with another guy. Where if it's the female that wants and another female comes into play, then the reverse is true, of course. The guy gets the extra candy because, oh, I get to have another female. But then the female goes, oh, I get to have another lady. I wonder how much of that's really going on amongst people I know. You know, one never knows. And I think, you know, uh, one of the other things that I'm going to be diving into that's in a similar world of mm -hmm. not, not, um, uh, dark or uh, the, what I'm, the word I'm looking for is the unsaid mm. and that is um, age difference. Mm. Um, and so um, I have this volleyball teammate of mine, he's in his mid twenties mm -hmm. and um, in a random side conversation, I asked him, I said, hey, wait, do you have a boyfriend or a husband? He goes, I have a boyfriend. And he says, Antonio, I know you're a matchmaker. I only date people over 50. I was like, okay. Huh. Um, I'm going to be meeting with him later because I'm continuing that uh, exploration for my own personal knowledge. My husband and I are only four years apart. Mm -hmm. My gay uncles that uh, mm -hmm. we had a dual wedding with uh, back in 2008 when it was allowed, um, they've wow. been together over 40 plus years and oh. they are 10 years apart. That used to be my age rate difference, but mm -hmm. we've got best friends that are 20 years apart. But mm -hmm. I've, in the research I've known, I'd love to know your thoughts, but... Mm -hmm. 
just like I like tall white blondes. My husband is six, six, I'm five, six. Um, I like tall, tall blondes. So does my right. brother, but you know, um, it's just another attribute. Age is just another attractive attribute that people have. Yeah, no, I get that. I was actually talking to, uh, yeah, I was talking to a guy yesterday that wants to hire me. Um, he's 51 and he says that he normally dates women that are like 28 to 38 max. So, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Part of me wanted to be like, I'm done here. Like I was annoyed, Tony. I was annoyed. I'm like, okay, you really want to have a child or you just want to date a younger woman? Like, what is it really? Um, I said, if I introduce you to somebody who's fit and very attractive and she's in her forties, he's like, yeah, I'm just not interested. She would, you know, have a hard time, you know, having a baby. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, so I, I, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I did go into my system and you know what, there are a lot of women in their thirties that would date up to 50. So that's on them. Um, I just don't want it to get to the point where, I'm struggling to find somebody with that large an age difference because it can be very challenging, especially as the men get older, where the women are like, yeah, he's kind of getting older and I'm still in my prime. So I think it can be challenging as you as you get older. Yeah, and what I've done with uh, my older clients is, mm -hmm. and oh, actually I'll, I'll just say all my clients, I say, I know you have a, a preferred age range, mm -hmm. but just know that a matchmaker's job is to do what they feel is best for you. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's going to mean pushing your limits and not giving you the same thing you've had your whole entire life, which is maybe why it's not working in the first place. And that's why mm -hmm. you have it. But um, with some of my clients, I've gone in completely different, you know, the full spectrum. Yep. And um, it's part of that process of uh, not illumination, but learning together as a matchmaker. Mm -hmm is you know I really do like more my age or mm -hmm. affirming I do like this that or the other yeah yeah totally so do you find that you have a lot of events um do you find that events are better for people than online dating without question you know I think um if anything uh, if COVID taught us anything in this space. It's we are human and mm -hmm. we need human interaction. Yeah. And um, I love that I was one of the first people to throw a Zoom cocktail party because yeah. I needed to see my people and um, Bloomberg News picked it up and I called it a uh, just a, a virtual happy hour. And oh uh, so selfish. I want to see my friends. Mm -hmm. um, I quickly learned that was like, oh, it's not the same. You know, talking to this dot on the computer is not the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to meet you, Lori, and have mm -hmm. cocktails with you in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, online is, you know, the antithesis of what we do. And that is, we, you know, we use our intuition as matchmakers to put mm -hmm. people together because mm -hmm. we feel like you're going to, uh, be good together and look good together. Mm -hmm. And that means in person. And we're also um, the answer to online dating because online dating is another photo, another bio. Is it real? Is it not? Mm -hmm. uh, all these algorithms, you know, let's, let me let a human do it. And God knows, you know, everything is AI, but uh, I don't think we're going to have AI matchmakers, you know, ever, because there are things that humans can do that AI cannot do. But um, yep. Also, when you're, you know, you know, speed dating in person, you know, as an example, mm -hmm. uh, you get to use your intuition, just like matchmakers are encouraging mm -hmm. you to, because that's what we use is you can per tell pretty quickly. But the other thing that's to be warned is, um, you know, when I have people go on that first date, I say, listen, this first date, you are not wearing your wedding dress to your first date. You're not wearing a tuxedo to your first date. You are finding out if there's a connection. That's right. So in, in speed dating, it's like the same thing. It's I always tell people, hey, listen, you have nothing to lose. You have five minutes. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Work to make a connection and then go on. Um, but you don't have that. But the danger with online is you you think you have a connection because you're like building up this story mm -hmm. in your mind of the Cinderella, you know, situation. Mm -hmm. The Cartier crystal pumps or whatever. But. <laughs>
<laughs> That's great. Well, you know, I help people with online dating all, all day long, but it is, I encourage people to get to the date as quickly as possible and then help them with background checks and whatnot so that they feel safe when they're going on the date. But yes, meeting in person is so much better. What do you think, switching gears for a minute, what do you think is the greatest difficulty that LGBTQ community faces today? Uh, in terms of dating? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I th think, you know, one of the, the number one things is, oh gosh, so many things came to mind. That's a great question. Thank you. you know, all communities are faced with um, what we're supposed to look like. Oh, I'm giving mm -hmm. myself chills, you know, because all these apps can also thin you and give you contours, mm -hmm. get rid of these lines and those lines and fade, if, uh, I mean, uh, um, filters and all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, that people are can sometimes be afraid of like, is this really the person mm. to go out with? And um, and people are image conscious. You know, when we look at, um, I'll just, you know, speaking about gays, I see these hot ass gay men mm -hmm. at these pool parties in Palm, Palm Springs. And mm. I'm like, my parties don't look like that. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, sure. We've all got good looking friends. And then we have friends of all shapes, sizes, races, backgrounds, orientations, but yeah. um, no, it is not that cookie cutter. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's one scary thing is, you know, body image. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that um, my number one thing with people is get off the bench and into life. Mm -hmm. You've got to start taking chances. You've got to start putting yourself into social situations to find that it's a real world and to help build up your self-esteem if you're challenged with self-esteem issues. Um, but then also it's finding people like you, um, mm -hmm. all groups of society, gay or straight. Um, there are all kinds of different little, um, clicks and finding people like you, your, within your very specific tribe mm -hmm. is so important and also very, can be very difficult. Like, um, one of the things I do as a matchmaker is, um, you know, I'm primarily executives that are newer to Denver um, mm -hmm. or out of a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. And okay, I can instantly help you build your social network. I've been in Denver for 20 years. I know everybody. Mm -hmm. And who do you meet? Are you into the art philanthropy? Are you into um, car collecting? There's this thing called Sunday Afternoon Car Club. It's a uh, gay car club because a lot of us gays like our classic cars. Yes, honey, put me in a big old 76 Eldorado convertible. Yes. Um, <laughs> And also like sports. So I met my husband playing sports. Mm -hmm. So there's, I think to go back to the original question, what's hard is a lot of people can sometimes feel not safe out being in their various cities, depending on where you live. Very mm -hmm. proud that here in Colorado, we have a, the only gay governor, but in Florida, honey, we were at Wilton Manors, which is Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Wilton Manors uh, proper, yes, mm -hmm. we felt safe. Then mm -hmm. we go to gay beach on the main Fort Lauderdale beach strip and there are Trump flags going by and people leering and saying bad things. I'm like, did we just go back 20 years? Wow. So for the LGBTQ community, it can be a scary place. And I've got dear, dear, dear friends in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they're still battling it. And we've all seen the anti-trans, anti-drag movement across mm -hmm. the country. Yes, we so have. Some of those things are the, the biggest challenges and why I always encourage people to find uh, spaces that they uh, they would like to frequent because of similarities and that they feel safe. Wonderful. And I I hate it for people who are afraid to be who they really are and live that lifestyle because they're afraid that they won't be accepted in society or by their their friends and family. What would you what would you say to somebody who maybe was kind of hiding in fear of being who they really are? Definitely uh, find, if you can, local resources, because almost every city, uh, medium to larger, of course, will have some kind of LGBTQ center resources, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, of course, there's, you know, the national presence. So um, parents and friends of lesbians and gays, also known as PFLAG, mm -hmm. is a great national resource um, for, to find more local sources, uh, you know, my father and I are estranged. He lives in Northwest Florida. 
Mm -hmm. Um, when my mom passed away in 2008, she was a filter, I feel. And Mm -hmm. my father went down this really right wing religious path and lives in Northwest Florida, the number one place to live. If you're conservative, Mm -hmm. uh, our, my dream is for my father and I to walk in a gay pride parade under the P flag banner. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm so happy when um, gay people share with me that they've got an open and welcoming family uh, and friends. And that's beautiful. I like that is the dream, the dream situation, but that's not always the case. And I'm a case in point. Uh, I, I, I'm very happy to report, however, um, the rest of our families are very loving. And uh, I think what's important, no matter where you live, it goes back to something you also said, and that was be you, be authentic, love yeah. who you want to love. And it, even that, as we were talking about earlier, involves changes and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, um, and also uh, don't get secluded. That's mm. dangerous. We saw that during COVID. Yes. Read out. You know, even if it's, uh, you know, your local grocery store and you just open your eyes just a little bit more. Who's like me? Who's like me? (laughs) Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that um, intimate part of yourself and your story. That really, really is meaningful. Thank you. you. Um, So to wrap things up, um, if you could offer maybe three pieces of advice to someone in the LGBTQ community who wants to make a few steps towards meeting people, expanding their social life, expanding their social circles, and they don't really know how to do it, what would you suggest? I'd say number one is find your fabulous. <laughs> what makes you, you? And that means doing some harder work instead of watch, you know, deciding to watch a Netflix show. Mm-hmm. I just started watching Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, by the way. It's oh, amazing. Love. Oh my God. I just yeah. started. Don't tell anybody. I, just, I won't say I a word. <laughs> <laughs> but um, find your fabulous. And instead of, uh, you know, uh, delaying, looking inside, look inside and, and journal what makes you you and then find people like you. Get out. I always say um, date and date often. Um, especially when you're coming out at, cause so LGBTQ people, um, until recently, I, I should say, we're not able to date in high school. So right. we couldn't figure out what we liked until college and even after. And I've got mm-hmm. some friends who didn't come out till 40 and 50 and they were in a straight mm-hmm. relationship. They're mm-hmm. like 17 years old again. And that's quite mm-hmm. fun, I must say. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's dating and dating often, um, straight or gay. Uh, you, when you hear yourself talk, you go, oh, that's interesting. But when you're not dating, you don't hear yourself talk. And you also, I also equate it to test driving the cars. Do I like Bentleys and Rolls Royces? Do I like Buicks? Do I like foreign, domestic, big or small? But you don't know until you go out there. Um, mm-hmm. And and I had some clients that say, I don't know what I'm attracted to. Mm-hmm. Um you know, the, or sometimes I'll say, I'll take anybody, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you don't get there until you, until you date. And I think that's the other big, you know, tip. And then also when you are dating, like I said earlier, don't wear the wedding dress or the tuxedo to the date, mm-hmm. be you, be glorious. You present yourself well, make a good first impression, mm-hmm. but just like you have to do the work. Um, to believe in yourself and know that, you know, I also tell people walk around the block before you go on that date and say, Mm -hmm. I got this. I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I deserve this. And that other person is going to pick up on your, your confidence level. And that is beautiful. Gosh, thank you so much, Tony. Do you have a charity that you, that you give to? I would say the number one thing that I support uh, is our local LGBTQ center. It's called the Center on Colfax um, because it has uh, all kinds of programs f- uh, for our entire community. Mm-hmm. I love this. The older community that I'm a part of uh, is called <laughs> West of 50. <laughs> That's cute. And it's awesome because we're also considered a Western city in Denver. But then they also have all the way at the other end of the uh, scale, the rainbow is Rainbow Alley and it's their um, youth program Mm -hmm. and then everything in between, but our, our, uh, it's called the center and the center also produces our pride fest, which is the fourth largest pride fest in the nation. 
Oh, wow. I had no idea. When is it? Uh, so traditionally, and this is also great information for you and your audiences, mm -hmm. uh, the fourth Sunday of June is for the major cities. Mm -hmm. And that's the Stonewall, celebrating the Stonewall riots of 1969. Mm -hmm. But other cities have started having theirs at other times of the year based on mm -hmm. their weather and what works better for them, like Atlanta in June, terrible. So they moved it to Halloween. Um, but the fourth Sunday in June is when we celebrate ours in Denver. Okay. And Charlotte, we, we do ours in August. Okay. Yeah. So something different. Yeah. Cool. Well, good. Well, Tony, it has been such a pleasure having you on the podcast. And um, if we're going to put all your handles and whatnot in the notes so people can follow Tony with Denver's Cupid and um, looking forward to seeing you at our next Matchmakers Alliance conference in, well, if not Cancun, I'm not sure if you're, are you coming to Cancun? I you know? was, but you I, were, I now- You've got something yeah, going on. I have to be in Guadalajara for the gay games. And That's that, right. That <sighs> takes place every four years. The last ones were Paris. The All next right. ones after that, Valencia, Spain. All right. Well, we have every month, we have a Matchmakers Alliance phone call, uh, Zoom call. So I'll see you on the next Zoom call, I'm sure. And, uh, and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, love. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Love on the Go. I hope you join us on our next episode. You can make sure to know when it is by following us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed it, it'd be great if you left us a review. I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, to learn more about me and how my team can help you, visit carolinasmatchmaker.com. Until next time.